This is not a gaming PC. Beautiful. Beautiful. Unethical. I've got to find this man, Lucius. The database is now a key encrypted. It can only be accessed by one person. This is a creator PC, and the difference is much bigger than you actually think. We've done some builds on this channel before. Walter White, Oppenheimer, Beethoven, and plenty of others. This time, it's going to have some Batman vibes. Nice. And I'm going to debunk the creator versus gaming PC part by part while you learn how to build this PC. Let's go for it. Fantastic sale by Newegg is live right now and there's some amazing deals to be found. It's the second biggest sale of the whole year. I'll leave the link in the top of the description below, but here are some of my favorites that I can see. There's Intel i5-13600K, which is probably the best bank for bot creator CPU right now. And finally, it's less than $300. In fact, $284.99, which is unbelievable price for that. We've got MSI Z690 Force Wi-Fi motherboard packed full of features and things that you might want as well as awesome design. Discounted from $370 to $199.99, absolutely insane. There's all sorts of PC components, CPUs, GPUs, storage, RAM, coolers, anything you want, as well as laptops like the Lenovo Legion Pro 5, insane discount on that, as well as full tower PCs. I mean, this is like a treasure land. You pick and there's loads of good deals out there. Go check it out right now. Do your holiday shopping early so you don't have to panic last minute. This is limited time only, so act fast. Links in the description below. Thanks Newegg for sponsoring this part of the video. Okay, I was gonna do the unboxing in the uh, you know usual setup, but I can't really fit it through the door there. So I'm hoping that the case, what we're gonna be building in is actually smaller than this case because this is absolutely huge. This is Cougar Kratos. Create your legendary case mods. Okay, some accessories in here. Okay, there's a glass panel in here. I'm not sure if you understand how big this is. Like I could fit in this box. Okay, let me see if I can fit it in the office now. I'll just put it here. Okay, let's take a look. Whoa, look at the front as well. It's kind of hard shifting it around here. There's four USB type A ports in the front here. We've got bent glass that goes here, which is interesting. Does this come off? Look at that. I bet this was hard to make. So interestingly, in the front, we can only have 120 millimeter two fans or 240 millimeter fans. So I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do with this case, but I've got a few parts that I think will fit in this build quite nicely. Is this gonna come off? Nope. So I can put some more fans on the side there. So this case is calling for something epic and I'm thinking what parts do I want to use for it? For motherboard, I want to use this MSI Z690 Unify. They haven't done the Z790 Unify for some reason, but what I love about this is that it's absolutely pitch black. It's probably the nicest dark black motherboard that you can get, but look at that. I think this just fits in this perfectly well over there. Motherboard. Number one difference between gamer and creator motherboards is that often buying a more expensive motherboard for creators is cheaper because if you actually included all of the features later that you want to add, let's say a 10 gigabit LAN, more USB type C ports, maybe you want some other ports or features on there on your motherboard already built in, maybe front panel USB-C, then adding all of those features later will become more expensive than actually paying for those features 
in the get-go. For example, uh, Asus ProAd Z790 motherboard, which has pretty much everything in there that you already need. If you want to add all the 10 gigabit LAN and all other things later, you might not only have the expansion slots to do it because your you know, 4090 is massive there, but also it is more expensive. Second thing about motherboard is the iGPU power. Some of the gaming motherboards, high-end gaming motherboards, don't even actually route power for the iGPU. So if you want to use the good, you know, QuickSync from Intel from the iGPU, you might not even have power for it by choosing the gaming board. And number three, when you are already using Adobe products, buying ProArt motherboard will get you three months off from your Adobe membership, which makes those ProArt motherboards very, very affordable. So highly recommend checking those out when building your creative PC if you are Adobe user. Since it's a special case for CPU, I would also like to use something special. And by special, I mean this. This is the 12900KS. Even though this supports the 13th gen as well, I want to use this one because I don't have a 13900KS. I really want to use that one, but because it's at 619, the 12900KS will fit perfectly in here. Oh no. Okay, got it. There was the tiniest bit of fluff in there. CPU is probably the biggest mistake point for people when building a creator PC. Number one, the iGPU actually matters. So when you are a video editor and you want to get Intel QuickSync, getting that iGPU is more powerful than NVIDIA graphics because it supports more codecs than NVIDIA media engines. So don't get an F variant when buying an Intel CPU. And for AMD CPUs, the iGPU doesn't matter a lot really, unfortunately. Number two, even though AMD X3D CPUs are the best CPUs for most of the gamers, for actual creators, the Intel CPUs seem to be performing better in a lot of the applications for creators. I mean, Photoshop, Adobe, you know, pretty much suit, that's Lightroom, Premiere Pro, After Effects as well as DaVinci Resolve, especially if you're a video editor because it also offers the iGPU, which I already talked about, but even the other applications, the single-threaded workloads, Intel seem to be boosting a little bit higher, resulting in better solution for creators. It might change, but in 2023, Intel is ahead of the creator CPU between AMD and Intel. Number three, biggest one, more cores is not necessarily good. Depending on your workflow, fewer, faster cores might actually be faster and better for your workflow. For RAM, I want to use something black. And this is a DDR5 motherboard, and I'm going to use the Team Group Vulcan DDR5. This is really nice matte black, and this is going to fit this build just right. Look at that. These are two 32 gigabyte kits. They are 56 mega transfers per second, so not like the fastest of RAM, but all together we're going to have 64 gigabytes and the 5600 mega transfers per second is still quite fast for the 12th gen and with four sticks I'm not sure we're going to be running, be able to run this anyway. So let's see. Boom. RAM. 16 gigabytes is enough, gamers say. Well, actually, not for creators. If I'm honest, I would settle at minimum on 32 gigabytes of RAM if you can. And when you can, upgrade it to 64 gigabytes as soon as you can because I have found that 64 gigabytes is kind of the sweet spot where you are not as bottlenecked with the RAM capacity because if your application has to fill the RAM and empty it, fill the RAM and empty it, you're going to start to see like lagging issues and it doesn't feel as fast because your RAM capacity just isn't there enough. Some applications that like to use a lot of RAM are Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Lightroom, Adobe, well basically all Adobe applications. Number two, don't buy too fast RAM. You think, whoa, I'll buy 7600 megatransfers per second RAM, but actually this might not be the best and fastest for you because, first of all, this is not what your IMC integrated memory controller supports, so it's actually out of the warranty spec. So if something happens to your CPU because your RAM was too fast, then technically Intel or AMD don't have to warranty your CPU because 
you have actually gone above the spec. So for the most optimal performance, stay within spec when buying the RAM kits. For SSDs, uh, I've got a few. There's two in here. Let's add this one and that one. And that should do for now. There's Kingston Fury Renegade, which is a very fast SSD. This is one terabyte. And then I've got a Solidime P44 Pro, which is the best OS drive you can buy right now on the market. What I have tested, okay? I haven't tested all of them, but feel free to check them out. The video where we tested all of um, the SSDs and saw, seen like which ones that's best for which use cases. But we're gonna use that for the OS. So we're gonna just plug that one in the top slot. We've got heating on the bottom and on the top. Then we've got a secondary slot there and I'm going to use the Kingston Fury one terabyte drive here. This is also very, very fast, like one of the top end NVMe drives, Gen 4 drives, performs very, very well. But the idea here is that this secondary drive is also super, super fast. If you want something that's blazing fast for your projects, whatever drives as a creator, then that's the one. Now, there is also third drive underneath there fourth and fifth on the bottom here and i'm going to use these bottom slots because then i can get it under one heatsink and for that i have the netac nv 7000 t ssds one of them one terabyte one of them two terabytes they're kind of mid-range budget ssds very affordable if you want to check them out i've just tested them have a look at the review on the channel if you haven't seen them yet but for extra projects and cash drive we're going to use these as well and i'm going to leave one empty well, for whatever you want to use for but all of these drives kind of you know fit into my batman theme if you know what i mean look at the design of these i know the design doesn't matter on the ssds and performance does but for this case let's 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 think about the design as well ssds for creators number one when building a creator pc don't pile all the stuff on one ssd don't just get a four terabyte os drive project drive archive drive cache drive no you can't do that. Go find out how to separate your workflow into OS projects and archive drive as well as cache drive. I've got a video on the channel. Number two, if you're a creator who works with large files, make sure that your terabyte written spec actually satisfies your workflow. And number three, when plugging in SSDs, don't plug them into the wrong slot and actually handicap some of the other things like lose some of the PCI lanes for a GPU or for some of the other things that you might be using. Just make sure that you have read the manual where to plug the SSD in, especially with Gen 5 SSDs. And for the cooler, we're gonna be using one of the best coolers you can get, which is the EK Nucleus CR360 AIO. Okay, now the question is where are we going to put the AIO because it can go in front so we could put it like that, stretching the tubes a bit, not ideal. We could put it like that. It would be all right, but still stretching the tubes a little. Or we could put it on the top there. I like that the most and have the tubes come over just something like that. So we put the tubes up like that. That looks even nicer. Okay, radiator goes on the top. Let's get some screws and attach them. For cooling, it's better as well when the radiator is on the top there. Okay, we're gonna use the EK Team Ectotherm paste here. Looks like there's enough for just one paste. There isn't much more in there. Interestingly, the tubes for this uh, EK seem to be very, very short. So I'm gonna have to bend them on an angle because they can't come up and on an angle there like that because you would get like a nicer line when you look it from the side, the tubes would be like kind of parallel to each other because they have to push this way. You can see they'll have to go like that because one of them has a bit of a shorter distance to go than the other one. This one is quite tight here. Coolers for creators. Number one, air coolers are underrated. A lot of the high-end air coolers are not just cheaper, but also more 
powerful than some of the 120 and 240 millimeter AIOs. So don't underestimate them because they're also very, very bulletproof. Nothing can really go wrong with them and they perform solid for the next 10 years. You don't have to worry about blockages in your pump or some leakage in your radiator. Also, the air coolers are more electricity efficient if you want to be more efficient. And most importantly, don't handicap your CPU by undercooling it. Even though you can air cool the 3900K or KS, for example, it's best to get an AIO for those types of CPUs because you will lose performance if you go air cooling in the long run because it does extract all of the cooling capability of your cooler and air coolers usually don't perform as well with the 13900K and KS compared to an AIO, 360mm AIO. And not all 360mm AIOs are equal, so choose wisely. We're gonna have to figure out some fans, but the EK's own fans, I don't like them because they're RGB and they're white inside. So it doesn't kind of look black when the PC is off. So I'm thinking we use these, the Lee and Lee Unifan P28, because look at that. These fans, now they look really, really nice. We're gonna get a similar design with these fans here. As you can see, they look absolutely amazing. And the easy installation of these is one of the best things about these fans. <laughs> the cool thing is Lee and Lee has designed these fans so that you can use normal size uh, like radiator screws for these because usually uh, if you have thicker fans like these are 28 millimeters thick your usual fan is 25 then the screw is not going to just hold on but they've tapered the screw holes in so you can use a normal screw that will go in and it's still going to stick out which is amazing well they'll have to go that way okay okay that's looking pretty cool already now i don't know what to do about this bit here because it's kind of like empty and would love to have some fans in there or do to do something right uh, just for the aesthetics because this is pretty beastly build and when you're having this on the desk you're not going to get this one because you know the performance or like the airflow this is really for aesthetics so we're gonna have to think about what fans to put in there. Maybe these three to slot in there. We're gonna have to see. I'm gonna have to get some kind of RGB in there. We'll think about that, but let's do something exciting and install our GPU. Now look at this beast here. This is another interesting bit here. In order to screw in, you're gonna have to like almost remove this here. I'm not sure if this is a like loose, kind of feels loose there, but it's kind of hard to fit in. I've got a long knock knock to a screwdriver, but you can see it's on an angle here. It's not straight. I think this looks pretty cool in here. At this angle build you didn't see it quite like on the side or when you were down there but the radiate angle is that and the um, motherboard angle is just like that interesting i think we still have to put something in there for the aesthetics this gpu looks really cool in here just because these lines they kind of like follow the curved line what's going on and then this kind of me um, metal in the front here is a little bit more gray than the rest of it so these are like a bit more silvery gray, which matches with that. GPUs for creators, and there's a lot of different things here. Number one, RTX 4090 is probably the best bang for buck GPU for most professional creators. You're thinking, what on earth are you saying? You're just saying buy the most expensive thing. No, actually, when you start to look at the performance, even performance for, for money, 
then when you start going down the list 40 80 40 70 40 70 ti you know 40 60 ti you start to realize that the lower you go the less you actually get for your money the 40 90 is so much more powerful than the rest of the pack it just kind of soars on its own there it's got the most vram which you will need if you're a professional video creator especially and when we're talking about 3d the 4090 is especially good because it's just incredibly powerful number two don't underestimate the vram needs for your workflow when editing 4k or 6k and you start to mix and match and have multicams in your timeline then that vram can actually add up or fill up very very quickly for example editing these videos like this on youtube i have actually used over 18 gigabytes of vram that's why we're using a 4090 not a 4080. number three if you're looking for a budget option don't call for team red or for team green it's actually team blue the arc a750 have a look at my review if it's out yet it's absolutely amazing and performs very very good for creators so i highly recommend checking them out apart from 3d creators perhaps not for them number four for photographers the gpu doesn't matter just get any gpu you want or how much budget you have depending if you do other things as well but it doesn't really matter number five AMD GPUs are good and getting better, especially the 7000 series, but they really don't have a match for NVIDIA because the Team Green cards really are more optimized for Adobe stuff. If you're working for Resolve, then perhaps the AMD GPUs are good. That's my 2023 option. Perhaps that's going to change. I hope it's going to change. And number six, GPU is much less important than a CPU. You're most likely going to hit a CPU bottleneck first than a GPU bottleneck first and the changing a GPU is easier than CPU so I would much rather have a high-end CPU and a low-end GPU than vice versa it's been a minute and um, I've had a few thoughts and I've had some time thinking about it where do I want to go from there because I kind of felt stuck uh, at this point like okay what do we do next because Online, you can see quite a few builds with exactly the same fan configuration. The circle 220 millimeter fans in the front and the RGB will be circle and then one in the back. But I kind of thought I, I want something a little bit different. So I was looking around which, which fans are there and I got these. The Lee and Lee Unifan AL120V2. Basically, these fans are RGB fans, but they also match on the side with our top fans there. And these are all black that are gonna be for the radiator, it's very, very cool. And on the inside of this is still white. What's different is that it's got lots of RGB on the sides here, like on the edges here and around here. And these are all separately controllable, which means that I can turn off the RGB for the middle fan in there and then have the RGB show only like these little lines of things, which means we can get quite an interesting shape of things going on in the front there not just like maybe round circles we'll see figure around a little bit what looks good because in the front it's got like a little line on the top there so basically we're changing these three from the front and in the back there to kind of give nicer kind of taste of rgb and then we're also going to be putting three of these because i got two packs of these as you can see, there's another pack there. And we're gonna put these in there as well as an intake. So they're gonna be pushing air in from the sides there. But if you look at the fan from the front, that's what it looks like from the front. But also from the back, it looks very, very minimal. And you've got the same RGB functions in the back as well. So we can get some really nice kind of tasteful RGB going, add a little bit of taste to this build. And then secondly, I was thinking about this 12 volt high power cable here. And if we're gonna have just the extension on here, you're gonna have like three massive cables coming around here, which I felt like, I'm not sure if, if this this looks good and even though I've got black extensions or we can have black cables for the you know motherboard and for the you know CPU power and so on I got these two things first of all this little thing over here is an angle 12 volt high power cable basically how this works is I can just plug this one in here just like that and as you can see through this now we've got the cable on the top there and then we can have the cable run from the top over the like GPU and then through the back very minimally and very tastefully. And for that, I got this one. This is from Easy DIY, uh, and you can get this from Amazon. This was very, very cheap and 
if you don't want like expensive cable mod cables, this will work as well. So this is basically the 12 volt high power extension cable. This is black and it's got four combs in here as well. And what we can do with this cable is now plug this cable in on the top there, okay? And have this GPU cable just run very, very minimally like that onto the side there and then through the back which makes this build really, really nice and doesn't like kind of affect any of this side profile of the GPU that really fits in with this design. So let's get these fans off and then new fans installed. Also, because these fans are uni fans, so you can actually link them together already just like that. And now we can just have this go on there. The cool thing also is that because you can connect these unifans together, like they clip into each other, when fixing this, right now I have fixed it with just two screws, one on the top there and then one on the bottom there, and they are already very, very solid there. Now you can put more screws in there, but it just makes the whole construction much, much stronger. By the way, these fans also are 28 millimeters thick, so a little bit thicker, which means more performance, and they go up to 2000 RPM. Before I'm going to manage all the cables in the back and figure out the like hubs and RGB in the back of the PC, there is one more major component that we want to install, which is the power supply. And for that, I'm going to use the Antex Signature 1001 Platinum One. Uh, fits very nicely in the color theme and 1001 is plenty to actually get it all powered. The cool thing about this power supply is that it's got a little OC link in here, which means that by using this little cable, like these two cables, you can link two of these power supplies together. And then if your you know, PC has loads of stuff, for example, or dual system, you can have two little power supplies for your one system and they kind of like link together and you don't need like two separate motherboards to work them, but then you can just get from the other one, which is pretty cool feature, pretty unique um, if you need that. The power supply installation is quite interesting as well. I'm not sure if you can see this right now, but this is like the bottom part, like power supply comes on the top there and then the power supply comes here. It's got like two brackets that hold it on. They kind of, and the power supply should sandwich in between them. So you're gonna have to take this bracket off, put the power supply in, put the bracket back and then screw it in from the backside, which means that if you've got GPU installed like I have right now, it's very hard to get the screws underneath the GPU. Good job, I have this flexible iFixit screwdriver kit so I can do it like that because otherwise this would not be possible. Okay, you've screwed the power supply in from the top and then the bracket comes on the other side to kind of support the other end so it's not like sagging down. You're going to put all the cables through it first. Power supplies for creators. Number one thing, don't cheap out because a good power supply can last you many, many builds and is cheaper to buy now than buy in the future. And with a higher usage of your PC, try to go above 80 plus power efficiency rating because that will pay for itself over the long run. Number two, don't underestimate the ATX 3.0 or PCA5 spec for your PSU because for your next build, most likely you're gonna need those things because power supplies are really changing. So if you are building right now, try to get those specs. Number three, try to buy your power supply 1.5 times at least bigger wattage than your PC actually needs because that will also help you with the future upgrades. Your power supply is also going to be more efficient when it's not 100% on the load. 
depending on your power supply, but that's usually the case. Number five, make sure you have enough PCIe connectors for your GPU and CPU connectors because I've made that mistake before. So I'm gonna do the cable management actually like this. Then there's more room to be on the back. If I had it this way, you might not see it. So, so all the power cables as well as the RGB, all of them uh, are gonna be configured now. Okay, I've done all the cable management, but it's it's not like ideal or very nice to do because there's not a lot of spaces where you can put the cables and wrap them around and there's nowhere to actually put the excess of the cable or of the PSU cables or something like that, for example. So basically, I've got the idea that I'm just going to put the the glass on and then hope that nobody sees on the other side basically and this doesn't even fit through as well because there's too many cables in there so there's no way to lock this in place and the glass is going to be the one that holds it in place there are little little rubble pads that go on there to make it hold tight i'm hoping that's going to do the trick i'm going to peel the back side of the glass off we can't do that later The weird thing is the glass is going to be on a tension and there's no way to change that. There's no way to screw that bottom thing in. And all of these screws actually don't have any rubber on them. So this is just metal screwing onto the glass, uh, which is not ideal either. It would be nice if there was some kind of rubber in there. But whenever you're getting this case, make sure that you've got a power supply or you're going to get extra cables for your power supply that support the 12 volt high power power cable and you don't have to have four in there because right now i've got the um actual converter that converts the 12 volt high power cable to four eight pin pca cables in there as well rather than having it directed to the power power supply um because that would save a lot of uh, cable clutter cases for creators number one don't buy an ugly case you're a creator have some respect for yourself. You know what a good design is. Buy a beautiful PC case. There's some gamers cases and there's some really nice cases. Don't buy the gamers cases. Let's do all of us a favor and then get those nice cases, you know, sold more than those uh, ugly gamer cases. You know what I mean. Number two, don't get misled by the fan support. You don't necessarily need a lot of fans. For example, on this PC, the side fans there are just for the show they don't actually give you any more performance. They're just blowing some edge just onto the wall. This is not really good. Think about your airflow and the airflow design because you don't necessarily need a lot of fans. You just need to have optimized number of fans. And lastly, when choosing a case, make sure you have a front panel USB-C port. As a creator, you don't know how important this is when you need to plug in some USB-C and you don't want to go behind the PC case and try to find your you know, USB-C port in the back. Having it in the front panel is amazingly helpful. Well, now there's only one thing to do, which is to connect it up and see if we can get a first post. Okay, I've got the power on and let's press the power button which i think is this okay there it is okay let's take a look what's going on in here 12900ks team group sk hynix okay let's put 5600 on it's very very quiet right now quite impressed actually how quiet this is Okay, I'm going to change the frequency for 5600 to 4800 because there's no chance that 4 sticks this is going to be able to run it at that. So I know that the 13th gen can do 5000, my 3900K can do 5000 right now. So I'm going to change this to 48. Hopefully that's going to be okay. Save configuration and exit. Yes. Okay, the uh, overclock failed on the memory. So what we're gonna try now is to see if we can update the BIOS and then see if that's gonna change anything if we update it to a newer one. Okay, let it do its thing. Then let's install Windows and get ready to configure the RGB. Oh, I just realized that little Chrome there 
is kind of reflecting this flaw here so it looks like I've got an RGB effect there as well for moving can you see that from this main angle look at that I've configured that now we're on windows some things are going good some things are going um, bad okay let me address one thing the RGB issue here okay so I have to work with three di different programs Number one is the Lee and Lee L Connect 3, which will connect the Lee and Lee fans. And that's the nicest to work with, actually. It works perfectly, does exactly what you want. At first, I had a little bit of a struggle, like finding out how exactly, what, what the heck does it all mean? Like, how does it work? But now it's working. As you can see, I've got the L Connect 3 on here. I can see like three sets of things that I can adjust separately. So there's three connectors that go into the hub. This is back fan there, right? Um, this is the side fan and then this is the front fan and I've got one like free port which is that one and it's very easy to see which one is which for example if you go to device and select the first one look it flashes blue there then we go to the side one and then when I'm clicking on to change the name of this it flashes blue and then the same with the front so you can know like which one is which so you can easily like figure out what's going on right once you go to the lightning settings there is uh, a few things going on so you've got the inside which is one and then the outside little lights which are basically two so if we've selected the first one then i can select either the outside or the inside ring both of them or just the ring inside or the outside so if i'm going to the outside here i can change the colors you can change the effect i've left it to breathing effect so the outside little lights are breathing effect as you can see why is the inside breathing as well okay right now for some reason is inside breathing as well so if you go all we go static and then if we apply to all, apply to all it applies to all of the insides of this so now it shouldn't see it's not breathing anymore so it had some kind of when i flickered it around it went a bit bonkers but right now all of the outsides are just breathing right now and as you can see breathing 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 that's what they're doing so now i can change the color effect i'll show you this because this got me a lot of time to figure out i can change the color here for example i can go yellow and you can this is basically a color picker here right you can change the speed and brightness but then you're gonna have to um kind of apply the color to your like these little squares so if i'm gonna pick green i'm gonna have to pick green and these are like kind of the fans respectively as i understand this correctly or like the led lights there so if i'm gonna press press apply to all you can see that now all of these are green right the, the flashing green if i pick white and then i'll do some of these white now as you can see this is white this is green does that make sense but if i'm going to want to make them all white i can just press connect and all of them are white now and apply to all they're all kind of breathing white but because i've got like a teal and orange theme going on i can make it deal everything on and then now this rgb is is working then second rgb what i have going on is msi center and there is the mystic light which to me this is like one of the worst ones here right as far as i know this is the only way to connect to the motherboard so what's connected to the motherboard i've got the ek block connected to the motherboard and then this front panel light in the front here if i'm gonna pick for example all of the leds which means inside there as well you can see that the ring if i change uh, rainbow and press apply what happens now is it's gonna start to nice make me really colorful lights there can you see orange there for example see orange very very saturated orange very good like you know lights right but if i'm gonna go to uh static which i often like to do or steady right and i'm gonna pick orange somewhere over there look what happens now if i'm pressing apply this is such faded this is not orange look at that it's like a little white something faded there so this is and if i'm going to blue the blues are very nicely saturated but all of the like even red look at that that is like pink that's not that's not red i don't know how to calibrate it but when it's going rgb it can do that so that's like a bit of a weird thing let's see greens as well greens are kind of as well look that's not green there so what i have set this to is teal because that's very nicely saturated and that like front will match there as well so it kind of goes together but i would love this to be orange like the light uh, fans over there for the third software which is our gpu we have to use firestorm 
okay and it just minimized it automatically okay we go to spectra I, I don't understand what on earth is going on over here first of all i don't know what idle and active means there is there is no like okay this is what it does and this is what that one does i have no idea i thought is it like when the gpu is idle it has one effect and when the gpu is active it's a different effect but when you go to active it gives you different effects than when you are idle and they're not mix and match i don't think active yeah then none of them are the same so is it just different types of effects i don't know i've tried to figure it out i can't find any information online if someone can help me out let me know in the comment section below then you can select multiple lighting zones right there's like this back logo there this bit over here then underneath lighting and then there's underneath the gpu and then kind of this wave there as well that are like different parts of the gpu if you select not the first one but the other ones for example like the first one is still on exchange color static look everything's still on it's just it's just like not working so with the gpu i've got the biggest trouble i would love it to just maybe the edges to be orange or the other way around the edges to be teal and then this bit to be orange in there for example but um i don't know so here i am with like the rgb situation i wish that we can control everything in one place like i know the lee and lee fans cost a lot but the actual rgb experience it does and works exactly what, how it is and it, there's no trouble right all the other bits are just oh, i don't know what, what's going on so why don't we check how well does this system perform by the way after updating the bios the actual clock speeds of the ram i got it to 4800 megahertz with four of them so as you can see updating by bios sometimes helps so you can see our core clock speeds there and uh, sometimes it's gone to 5.5 right but what i want to know is how good is it at cooling this inside this room right now there is 27 degrees 10 minutes multi-core start and let's see whoa instantly thermal throttles there at 310 watts 5 5.1 so let's try this again interestingly it's very instantly thermal throttling so i think the thermal paste application there wasn't that good or the ks just runs very very hot because on my 13900k this was very 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 good it's interesting that the case is like blowing air out from here because the fans are pushing it against the glass on the top which slides it across this way and the other way which is kind of interesting phenomenon let's try a single one not good i'm quite not happy with this so let me turn it off maybe try to repaste it and then see what happens because this is not good. And what I like about the Unify motherboard is that the Dr. Debug is not actually uh, red, but it's white light over there. Oh, you can't really see it. Let me show you that. Can you see that light over there? It's white. And then the bottom lights on the motherboard are white as well. Okay, let's also try a fur mark here. I'm gonna put this on and let's see about our GPU now then. Honestly, there's not going to be a trouble for this GPU. 67 there. It's interesting knowing and seeing that this connector actually works here as well. So this angle connector on the, this is like one of the nicest um, solutions I've seen on any of the graphics cards. It so nicely fits in between there. And then you can just put your cable back if you have a connecting cable like that one. I like that a lot. So I don't think the GPU is going to be an issue here. So if you go to the fans, the fan speeds are like 49% right now. Um, so let's say if we go manual and go ha, ha, ja. Look at this temperature now at this point. As you can see, it's got so much more cooling potential. So it's climbing down now, downwards. 28.9, we've heated up the room. And look at that. It's still going back downwards, downwards, downwards. I wouldn't worry about the GPU temperature. I'll let it go back to like 40, 80, as you can see. Let me try repasting because I'm not quite happy how that GPU or CPU did it. So this time we're going to be using Arctic MX6 because I ran out of the EK one. And usually I've had really good 
results with this one. So let's see if we can get it a bit better there. Second attempt. It's even warmer in the house. 28 degrees. Okay, and let's try this again. I've turned a bit more of the screws tighter. I don't know how tight should you like put them. They feel quite tight, but let me try that again. See, maybe it's not getting like a proper pressure on it. No, still instantly. Instantly thermal throttling. Maybe it's the re positioning of the tubes. I don't quite know. So then, firstly, the overheating. And I think that is just due to the 12900KS. It's got a lot of power condensed into a very, very small area on the CPU that just is very difficult to cool down. And if you look at the motherboard, as you can see, it is pushing 1.5 volts maximum through the CPU, which no wonder it's gonna run hot when you put that much voltage through. So depending on the motherboard actual power as well, because some motherboards are a little bit more conservative in terms of the voltage and power and how much they push this. But this is very aggressive gaming motherboard, which pushes the CPU absolutely to the maximum. As you can see here on this Cinebench 2024, we have reached 104 degrees on the CPU package and 100% on the core temperatures there. Let's take a look at some of the benchmarks here now then of this Batman PC. So first of all, in Cinebench, 2024, the RTX 1490 on this Redshift gets 33,000 points, which is absolutely insane score. As you can see, uh, the Radeon Pro W6800 is getting about three, more than three times less points. It's very, very powerful. M1 Ultra is somewhere over there. M2 Ultra is somewhere above there. So if you're looking for a good 3D rendering GPU, then this 1490 from Zotac is pretty good. The multi-core and single core here, 1399 points and 116 if you want to test your own. By the way, Cinebench R24 is actually free and available for everybody to test. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to test your PC. By the way, let me know what your scores you're getting and what specs, because that will be interesting to compare in the description below. Doesn't matter how high or how low end, it will be interesting to see how well does it stack up with the Batman PC. But interesting on the Cinebench R24, 24 is pulling 316 watts maximum from the package power of the CPU and as you can see when we're idling we are going very low as well on the Intel CPUs like 6 watts that's very very low. A 2 cores have boosted 5.5 gigahertz and then the rest of the 6p cores are 5.2 and then the e cores go to 4 gigahertz. When we're looking at the GPU, GPU max temperature was not very hot at all as you can see it, this is not a problem for that we only pulled 277 gpu power the rail power was 307 but it can pull much more there as you can see and interestingly uh, we did use quite a lot of the gpu memory on the redshift benchmarks 22.5 gigabytes which is very very interesting so the more vram you have the better redshift basically performance there you get as well so now the creative benchmarks we got 1180 from budget bench for after effects so you can check out the actual specs and you know the individual test results and if you want to compare it to yours as well as some of the hardware info on the side like during that benchmark what did we use how well does the hardware reacted there the gpu only pulled 188 max watts as you can see there and we use about 10.9 gigabytes of vram and lots of interesting information that you can check out then we've got to Vinci Resolve for Puget Bench and you can see the extended and standard overall score. Standard overall is over 3000 points which is very impressive and the actual DaVinci Resolve Studio version was 18.5.1 which is one of the latest ones and if you haven't upgraded yet I highly recommend to do that because I can see that the Fusion cores and the 4k and 8k media scores overall scores the 18.5.1 is faster than the previous version. I have been testing on the 18.0.4 with that version of DaVinci Resolve we're getting actually lower benchmarks. So in Premiere Pro we got 700 and 900 as the extended and standard overall scores 
but I do want to mention that this motherboard does not support power for the iGPU. Even though we've got an iGPU in there, then 12900KS like I mentioned on the CPUs there before, this motherboard does not support power for this and we can't use the iGPU. Even though it's there, you just can't use it. There's no iGPU out from the motherboard either. So as a creator, that is not an ideal thing to do. As you can see, gaming PC is not a creator PC. If you did have a motherboard that supported iGPU, we'd get even higher scores. But here, as you can see, we don't have the Intel QuickSync. Interestingly, the GPU power we did use over 400 watts there as you can see 435 watts cpu goes 322 watts pretty decent and the last one is photoshop here we got 1413 points and even though with thermal throttle there interestingly our package power was only 95 degrees and cpu core temperature 93 degrees now to underline it one more time, gaming PC is not a creator PC and if you are a creator, please build yourself your own PC, your creator PC, which would not only be cheaper but also better and you can make it look whatever you want, whatever theme, just make something nice. Do us all a favor and don't build a PC that's some kind of RGB VOM unicorn. Try to build something that looks nice, have some design to it. There's plenty of builds I have on the channel or just check out some other builds that you can find online, but just don't build the gaming PCs, okay? Do everybody a favor, support the creativity, the creators build a nice PC and support us by buying our merch, technotistore.com. Nevertheless, I think this PC does have a space and a spot in this channel and i think this just shows that you can build whichever pc you want and you can make it whatever theme and i kind of like this pc i like the different design and i can appreciate the design aspects for this one would i personally have this case and built this pc for myself probably not because I'd like to be more efficient what would work for my workflow. But nevertheless, we've used some cool parts that you can use in your build. Not all of them I would recommend, but some of them for sure, like the GPU and CPU cooler. I think they are very, very awesome there if you want to check them out. Comment your favorite budget and theme in the description below, and let's see which PC should be built next. Oh, and guys, I never said thank you for subscribing. And you'll never have to.